One of my absolute favorite type of games has got to be the beat em up. These games kept my attention longer than other games at the time did. And the very best beat em ups were always in the arcades. I mean, the graphics, the sound, the controls. Everything was better than the home versions, which really sucks if you didn't get to hit the arcade often, or if the arcade in your area didn't have certain games. So I wanted to really take a look at some arcade games that I really enjoyed as a kid and some that I didn't even know existed. And for the record, I own every single one of these arcade cabinets in this video. Let's take a look at some arcade The beat-em-up that really revolutionized the genre has got to be Final Fight. Released to arcades in 1989, Final Fight started development as a Street Fighter sequel, but after the success of the Double Dragon franchise, they changed directions with the game. You'll play as one of three fighters taking to the streets of Metro City to rescue the kidnapped daughter of Mayor Mike Hager. Each fighter features his own unique fighting style and attributes, and enemies are pretty varied so things don't get too repetitive. The stages are filled with destructible objects that contain power-ups like health pickups and weapons. And weapons consist of items like 2x4s and knives and can only be used for a short period of time. Each level ends with a boss battle and this is usually where I lost most of my allowance as a kid. The bosses are often cheap and hard to attack without getting attacked back twice as bad. The stages are pretty incredible looking as well are the fighters. The large, high detailed sprites are what first drew me to this arcade cabinet as a kid. Games like Double Dragon weren't even close to looking this good. Final Fight not only looked the part but played it as well. This is still a fantastic beat em up and a legend in the genre. Ninja Baseball Batman has nothing to do with the DC Comics superhero, but is one of the coolest beat-em-ups I've ever played in my life. This game definitely does not take itself seriously. You choose from four different characters, all of which are dressed in baseball uniforms and come equipped with baseball bats. These characters are also named after famous baseball stars like Jose Canseco and Daryl Strawberry, for example. It plays like any other beat-em-up. You've got an attack button and a jump button, and you can also perform special attacks that cause more damage than basic moves, but they also drain a little bit of your character's health. The enemies consist of giant baseballs, ghosts, pumpkin-head people, these things. One boss battle even has you battling an airplane in an airplane. This game is just straight-up addicting. The level designs are based on real-life cities such as San Francisco and Las Vegas. And the backgrounds look really good, they're really colorful and change up quite frequently, so you shouldn't be bored with the visuals. This is one fantastic game, and it's a shame I never got to play this in 1993 when it hit arcades. And that's probably due to the fact that this game was a huge success in Japan, but the exact opposite in North America. If you ever get a chance to play this one, do it. You will be glad you did. Growl is an interesting game I recently heard of. You step into the shoes of a forest ranger who's trying to stop poachers from endangering wildlife. I did mention this game was interesting, right? It's a standard format beat-em-up with weapons, and I like the inclusion of guns here. It makes the gameplay a bit more interesting. There's also a whip, which, while equipped, will make you look like Indiana Jones. And you can also beat up 90s-looking businesswomen, even though this game takes place in the early part of the 20th century. The enemies will straight up bum rush you. I mean, there were times where it felt like there were 30 people on the screen at once. I love how you can pick up just about anything around you and throw it at your enemies. It brings a bit of excitement to a lackluster play mechanic. The graphics are pretty dull and the sprites aren't very large. It's not the best looking arcade game, but the music is quite good. 
the levels progress a bit slowly, which can discourage some people, but it's definitely still worth checking out. What do Cadillacs and dinosaurs have in common? Well, they're both in this 1993 release from Capcom. The game is based on the animated series Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, which was based on a comic book called Xenozoic. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. You have four characters to choose from, all of which feel quite different from one another. The fighting aspect of this game feels really good. The combos are really satisfying to pull off. Weapons consist of everything from knives to machine guns, and special moves can be performed at the expense of some of your player's health. You'll take on the average beat-em-up goons and also come across a few dinosaur battles. The driving portions of the game are short but very satisfying and remind me of a 2D side-scrolling version of Grand Theft Auto as you're just mowing over your enemies. Visually, this game is fantastic. I really like the artwork and the little extras they threw in, like the comic book style fonts displayed during explosions. I love that stuff. The music is great, as well are the sound effects. My only gripe would be the announcer who's yelling at you to go. I played this game for the first time about 10 years ago, and I've been a huge fan of it ever since. I've told some friends about it over the years, and I've yet to come across somebody who's also played it, or better yet, even heard of it. And this is the perfect example of what a beat-em-up should be. The Simpsons arcade game was one of the games that dominated my local scene in the early 90s. If a place had this game in their arsenal, it was the go-to. There was always a line. This is one of those Konami four-player arcade games where the player you select is based on which joystick on the cabinet you select to control. The Simpsons wind up in the wrong place at the wrong time, which leads to Maggie getting kidnapped by the bad guys. Each character has a unique attack. Homer uses punches and kicks to attack enemies, while Bart uses his skateboard, Lisa uses a jump rope, and Marge uses a vacuum cleaner. There are weapons here and there that can be thrown at enemies and health pickups scattered throughout each level. The fighting mechanic is a little on the simple side, but that doesn't really take away from the fun of the game. The level designs are top-notch, as are the character sprites. This game looks really good. The game isn't quite the same as it was 14 years ago, but it's still one of my all-time favorite arcade games, period. Man, between Capcom and Konami alone, we have some Pretty incredible games on this list. Armored Warriors is a Capcom title that was released in late 1994. And this is a mech themed beat em up. And while I'm not a big fan of mech games, I have to say this game is incredible. You've got four mechs to choose from here one is well rounded, one designed for close range attacks, one that's known for its power, and one that specializes in being very fast. And they all control very differently. The game takes place during the year 2281, during a war that ranges between multiple planets. This game utilizes the perfect mix of melee and gun combat. You can also power up your mechs with pickups that you'll find throughout the game. These power-ups consist of items like rocket launchers and even hover platforms. The gameplay is pretty chaotic, which is great. I really like the level of action that's taking place at any given time. They've got these side-scrolling run-and-gun stages as well, which adds some diversity to an already great game. Armored Warriors looks great, sounds great, and plays great. You can't ask for much more from a beat-em-up. Here's another great Capcom beat-em-up, this time with a blockbuster license. This is Alien vs. Predator, and it hit arcades in 1994. 
Just like most of the games on the list, you'll get to pick from four playable characters. There are two cyborgs and two predators to choose from. This game controls a bit like Armored Warriors. You've got a jump button, melee attack, and projectile attack. The gameplay is very smooth and polished. I like that the game is a bit more forgiving than some other beat-em-ups. You don't have to be on the exact scan line as your enemy to make contact with them. This is definitely one of the best looking beat-em-ups for its time. It's not a widely colorful game, but that's due to the nature of its theme. Backgrounds look very detailed and feature some pretty nice scrolling effects. Unlike a lot of early beat-em-ups, Alien vs. Predator can handle quite a bit of action on screen. I mean, look how many aliens just keep popping up out of the woodworks. This game came highly recommended from a friend, and I'd actually never played it up until recently. This is a great game. Battle Circuit is a late 90s arcade game that only saw release in Japan and Europe. This is another light-hearted beat-em-up. In fact, this game is just plain silly, but that doesn't take anything away from Battle Circuit. It only adds to the unique experience. The game is set in the future. You're part of a team of bounty hunters that are looking to retrieve a computer disc from the evil Dr. Saturn. The entire game has this sort of comic book style feel to it. Every single one of the five characters you can select from are extremely different from one another. Each comes equipped with a standard, special move that can be performed when both action buttons are pressed together. There are also special moves called battle downloads that can be purchased between levels with coins found in-game. These moves require unique button combinations that one might see in a fighting game. The game is very colorful and looks good, but for a 1997 title, I would, wouldn't expect anything less. If you like these goofy kind of games, check this one out. It's one of the coolest beat-em-ups I've played. The first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game was released in 1989. It was later ported to the NES with about half of the graphical and sound capabilities, but Nevertheless, this is where the series got its start. This is another awesome Konami beat-em-up in which you can select from any of the four turtles to rescue April O'Neil and Splinter and take on the evil Shredder. You'll make your way through the city streets, sewers, and even burning buildings in standard beat-em-up fashion. The graphics were good, the music was great. We thought we were playing the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game ever. Until this. Arcades got Turtles in Time two years later in 1991. And this game boasts better graphics, better sound, more enemies, and better gameplay. Now, luckily, this game was ported to the SNES, so we didn't have to visit the arcades every time we got that Ninja Turtles bug. But this was hands down the more advanced version, and any time I got a chance to play it, you can bet that I was searching my pocket for quarters. Most people are familiar with this game, but if not, please do yourself a favor and go beat this game. Not play it, but beat it. Put it on your bucket list. This is April on the own recording. <laughs> hey, Crane! Bring that statue back, you bloated beanbag! A while back, I did a review for the Punisher on the Sega Genesis. Well, that game was a port of this game. Choose either Punisher or Nick Fury, though it doesn't matter much as they both play and feel almost identical. But then again, the Punisher is just too cool, so yeah, pick the Punisher. Now, I had only played the Genesis version, so when I got to play this one finally, I was pretty impressed. I mean, visually, this game is extremely impressive. It's colorful with great graphics, and it has that 
awesome comic book style presentation that I love so much in these games. Combat is pretty basic for a beat em up, other than the fact that you can wield firearms. Seriously, pistols, machine guns, and even a frickin' flamethrower. Yes, a flamethrower. The Punisher is like Final Fight on steroids. Knights of the Round is a 1991 release by, you guessed it, Capcom. This is a hack and slash title similar to Sega's Golden Axe franchise. Fight your way through seven stages to overthrow the evil King Garibaldi, or however it's pronounced. The weapon combat feels very satisfying and the combos keep things entertaining. I really like the backgrounds in this game, like in this level you're facing a boss on a cliff near the ocean and the waves are just pounding into the side of the cliff with all kinds of gloomy clouds shooting out bolts of lightning. Awesome. The music for the most part isn't bad, but this one in particular makes me want to hit my head into things. King of the Dragons was another hack and slash release by Capcom that's similar to Knights of the Round. The main difference here is that some of the playable characters have projectile weapons. I would actually say that this game is a bit closer to Golden Axe, right down to some of the enemies in game and the fact that it focuses heavily on dragons and other fantasy aspects. I don't like that the combat isn't combo based, meaning you really only get one hit on an enemy at a time. That doesn't keep my attention for very long. Graphically the game looks pretty good, it's got a lot of color and animations are pretty smooth. I only wish the sprites were a tad larger. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this one, but it's not breaking any records. I know absolutely nothing about Sailor Moon, but I'm pretty sure somebody a while back recommended this game on my channel, and I'm glad I got a chance to play it. I don't know who any of these girls are, so I just pick at random and hope for the best. Standard attacks don't have much reach, but jump kicks are very effective when you need a different approach. Special moves can be performed, and every time you do one, you'll be greeted with a little animated movie of your character saying something in Japanese. You can also run by double tapping a directional button. I feel like this is pretty essential for me in a beat em up game. I like the visuals a lot. I feel they did a really good job on the sprites, but even more so on the backgrounds. There seems to be a lot more detail and shadow effects over other similar titles from the time. It just looks really good. The music is also pretty fantastic. A lot of Japanese rock meets jazz type of stuff going on here. This is definitely not going to get me into this series, but it's still one hell of a game. The Combat Tribes hit arcades in 1990 and was made by the same people that brought us Double Dragon. This game is a lot different than any other on the list. Instead of moving from left to right through a level, you're thrown into a stage more similar to those seen in fighting games where you're given only a small stage to move back and forth in. You can choose from three people, but I always choose Guile here. Guile's my favorite Street Fighter. The visual presentation is a bit more on the cartoonish side, but I think it looks great. Lots of bold black lines and tons of color. I like the wide range of enemies to go along with these levels. Though these roller derby chicks did piss me off quite a bit, they were ridiculously hard to hit. There aren't much as far as standard weapons go, like knives, pipes, and 2x4s. Instead, you can pick up random objects that are scattered throughout the stages. Like here, you can pick up the motorcycles and toss them onto your opponent. This is a cool little game, but it doesn't feel like your average beat em up, so it might not be for everyone.
1993, Data East created this little gem of a beat-em-up. Night Slashers is a horror-themed beat-em-up, which is awesome. First off, the gameplay feels really good here. It plays a lot like Final Fight, but with more special moves. There are three characters to choose from. Pick one and start kicking some zombie faces in. Everything is pretty stereotypical horror or Halloween stuff, like Frankenstein, zombies, the Grim Reaper, mummies, haunted woods, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's great though, the game is really entertaining. The graphics are good, but more than that, the little things are what impress me the most, like punching zombies' heads off, or how the zombies spit vomit at you, or the enemies that are engulfed in flames. This game is loaded with good times. Check this one out if you get the chance. We're gonna top this whole thing off with another Konami title. The last game is X-Men, which was released in 1992. You can choose from Wolverine, Cyclops, Colossus, Storm, Nightcrawler, and Dazzler. Along your mission to stop Magneto, you'll run into a lot of familiar faces from the X-Men series, including the Sentinels, Blob, Juggernaut, Mystique, Pyro, and more. You've got your standard attack, a jump button, and a mutant attack. The fighting mechanic here feels really good. I love the gameplay this title delivers. It's not a bad looking game for the time. I mean, it may not be as good as what some other of these titles offer, but it's still better than what the home consoles at the time could pull off. The intro video is pretty amazing though. I remember watching this play over and over while I wished I hadn't ran out of quarters in the arcade as a kid. X-Men. This game is very addicting and I always find myself playing it longer than I anticipated. There were a lot of other beat-em-ups I wanted to include here, but just didn't have the space in this video. There are so many good beat-em-ups in the arcade and it's hard to limit them. Maybe I'll pull off a sequel to this video in the near future. For now, I hope you all enjoyed the games I included here in this review, and thanks for watching.